information about their protective fabrics and in particular the new technologies that they are using for individual CBRNE protection. So sir, the floor is yours. Thank you. Let me let me just thank for one second uh, Gore to be our golden sponsor and supporting the realization of this conference is thank to, to, to you guys basically if we are here and we are connecting all the world. And again, I do invite everybody to visit the stand uh, the, in the virtual reality of GORE because you can do the same work. Look at the video, download the brochure and uh, start an interaction with uh, Giovanni, with the colleagues from the GORE for any needs that you have uh, for protection, but not only technologies in CBRN. Giovanni, you have the floor. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks a lot, and I hope you see my screen now and my presentation. Can uh, you see it? Yes, perfect in uh, full screen. Okay, great. So first of all, I wanted also to 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 congratulate uh, all of you, the organization, for the great uh, result once again you you managed to obtain with this uh, SIG 2020 series conferences. And uh, we we are uh, on your side uh, since many years, and uh, I think we are we are very happy and very proud to to have done so because uh, it's uh, you have you are doing a great job all together uh, to educate and to to gather uh, the the global uh, knowledge and competence in in uh, the CBRN area. So thanks again. And uh, yeah, basically uh, uh, today I I will go through um, an overview of on our uh, latest technology that can offer uh, some uh, different options for uh, broad chemical and biological protection, together with uh, mission effectiveness. Because uh, there are always these two sides uh, that need to be in balance. That uh, we need to obtain the protection needed when uh, we are in a contaminated environment, but on the, uh, on the other end, we need to have uh, a, um, the possibility to deliver the mission. Um, and uh, um, as, uh, as uh, Mike Thornton was saying, is uh, Gore is probably very famous for, for Gore-Tex. So we, we make uh, fabrics uh, uh, that deliver uh, protection to the users in uh, in the form of garments mostly, but also gloves, uh, boots, uh, socks, uh, hoods, and um, and normally we offer protection uh, against uh, extreme weather condition, against uh, flame, but also we deliver protection with our fabrics against uh, chemical uh, and biological threats. So I just move on and. Just, uh, just very few, very few um, statement quotes uh, from uh, some past situation that uh, some case histories, where basically has been uh, put the evidence that the the standard traditional technologies that uh, we have and we will see later in our slides uh, to protect the body of uh, of operators. Uh, in uh, in a situation of uh, can buy or severe and threat is uh, is not always the best. So, for instance, here we have some statement coming from uh, uh, three different uh, situation of uh, of crisis, uh, where uh, the the expert uh, realized that uh, traditional garments uh, were not uh, useful to to deliver the protection and the effectiveness in the in the operation needed. So. In, in one case, in two cases, he's, he's talking about a, a carbon uh, permeable protective uh, garment that uh, not always is, 
is the best solution. So I just pick up uh, one. Uh, in this case, was uh, um, it was not an appropriate capability for using the Ebola outbreak area. So uh, in this case, uh, the U.S. Uh, DoD sent uh, um, three, around 3,000 soldiers in Central Africa to help. Uh, in the in the cordon uh, and uh, in the limitation of uh, the Ebola outbreak, and uh, to do so, they had to uh, utilize a different uh, equipment, different protective garment from the standard one, as uh, carbon does not give the appropriate protection, as as uh, is stated in the in the sentence. And uh, I, I like to pick up the last one also because uh, this is more uh, uh, looking at the future. Uh, probably, probably what uh, is known as chemical and biological threat today will will be somehow different in in the future. So we we need to understand that if uh, the technology we have today can offer and can deliver protection and uh, operational effectiveness also in the future. As I said uh, at the beginning. Uh, we, know, we need always to, to balance uh, the concept uh, uh, of protection with the uh, thermal burden. The operator moves uh, uh, with a protective gear that includes uh, protective garments. And, uh, and of course, if the protective garments is going to limit in an excessive way, or if it does not protect in the, in the way needed, uh, this will compromise the mission. And, uh, just for some examples, of course, the, the threat landscape is always uh, is ever changing and um, the, the broad protection is needed to ensure protection against uh, uh, different types and forms of the agents. And we will see later on in, in, uh, in the following slides. Uh, protection must be consistent, uh, um, even in some specific conditions. So just imagine uh, in uh, the, 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 the 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 agent uh, 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 the can bio agent can be applied with uh, with extra pressure for different reason. There can be some uh, some external environmental uh, uh, contaminants to to take into account as well internal one. And uh, the um, as I said, the protection alone is not enough. We need to consider uh, how the system, the burden, the terrible burden that the system offer in terms of weight, bulk, and mobility. So the the traditional technology, I'm sure all of you knows, uh, for protective garments in uh, chemical uh, and biological um, contaminated environment, uh, are, are are two. One is uh, a a material, a fabrics uh, uh, that is air and moisture vapor impermeable, and uh, a carbon-based air permeable material. Those two technologies operate in completely different way. So, for instance, uh, um, in in the case of uh, um, air uh, impermeable uh, uh, material, this is a real physical barrier that protects the user. Uh, of course, uh, there is a need to verify not only the material, but the ensemble. And um, this is going through material level testing uh, on the material and system level testing on the, on the full uh, garment uh, and system. The, the impermeable system, the impermeable uh, garments um, reduce uh, a greatly heat dissip dissipation, thus increase a lot the risk of heat injury. So heat stress is always a risk when you are wearing an impermeable uh, uh, garment. Well, let's see about carbons. Air permeable uh, uh, system like uh, based on carbon technology for sure uh, help um, dissipation of heat because uh, there is air permeability. So there is an airflow of air from the outside to the inside and to the outside of the garment. And this reduced the risk of heat injury compared with the air impermeable system. For sure, a, a carbon is a, is a technology that 
is based on a filtration of what it comes through. So there is not a real physical barrier to small particles. And um, in some situation, this cannot be enough to protect. As I, I mentioned before, in, in the case of the, the Ebola outbreak. So um, there are some reference here of tests. So current air permeable system do not meet the, some, uh, in this case, uh, North American test, uh, civil uh, um, uh, norms like NFPA in 1994 or 1999 and the viral penetration resistance test. Um, so what Gore has done uh, using uh, our experience in, uh, in, uh, in producing uh, protective uh, uh, fabrics is has created a, a material that based on the Goretex technology is, uh, is giving uh, a, a physical barrier, but that allows um, moisture vapor transmission. So this is how it, uh, it works, as you can see. And you see there is a Gore Campac, uh, which is the name of uh, the brand name of, uh, of our material for uh, CVRM protection. Um, selectively permeable membrane. And uh, as you can see, this membrane stops the, 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 the agent uh, coming from the outside in uh, both chemical and uh, or biological agent and uh, it stops in different uh, in any forms that it presents so uh, in case of vapor aerosol liquid or uh, particulates normally the membrane is is then uh, uh, laminated with uh, an outer fabric and then a liner fabric to to protect and to improve the comfort uh, the durability and the comfort of the material So, the intention is to, to offer the broadest range of protection without trading off too much in thermal burden performance. So, the vapor uh, permeation protection, uh, aerosol protection, toxic industrial chemical protection, uh, liquid protection, all this is offered by our material and uh, uh, at the same time offering uh, a, a very good uh, performance in thermal burden and uh, uh, this, all these enhance for the mission effectiveness. So this is how traditional carbon technology normally works. Of course, it's, it's a filter, so it absorbs um, what, what is going through the carbon layer. And so this means that uh, over time, uh, with uh, with the saturation of the carbon layer, the the, um, the level of protection degrades. Another example here is uh, also that uh, if there is uh, a, an external environmental condition that uh, uh, increase the the level of uh, of uh, of uh, substances that go through the the carbon layer, um, this will saturate uh, faster. So in this case, it, it just imagine uh, with increasing wind speed, this will, uh, will definitely uh, saturate the, the carbon layer faster. And uh, as you see, uh, with Gore Campac, uh, uh, selectively permeable membrane uh, products, uh, there is still a physical barrier that uh, does not allow uh, the, the agent, the uh, aggressive agent to go through, independently from uh, external uh, environmental conditions. In this case, as I said, uh, wind speeds. So we do test our, uh, our material, uh, also in the form of, of uh, full garment, a full ensemble for uh, aerosol protection. And also in this case, so there are specific tests where you can uh, in uh, in uh, laboratories specialized laboratories uh, tests can vary from from Europe and North America or there are some some that are uh, standards 
but basically the idea is to uh, to understand the level of protection that is offered by the ensemble against uh, um, threat agents in the form of particulates uh, also with uh, with uh, with uh, wind driven as you can see from the pictures uh, you can replicate also wind speed um, as you can see, uh, the difference between uh, a, a gore campak selectively permeable membrane and, a, and traditional carbon technology, um, it's uh, when, when uh, the wind speed uh, uh, increase, it's uh, definitely the, um, completely different. So there is uh, the physical barrier of the membrane that stops the particles to, to go through. So, as well, in terms of toxic industrial chemicals, uh, the, the gore campak uh, uh, selectively permeable membrane offer a, a, a very high level of protection. And uh, while uh, sometimes traditional carbon technology, not with, uh, with all the, the, the agent, uh, can guarantee protection. So, you, in this case, you see chlorine uh, dimethyl sulfate. This is easy for uh, for somebody working in Gore since 22 years because uh, Gore uh, has invented Goretex, and so uh, basically our membrane offer full protection against any kind of liquid. So it's a liquid barrier, even under a very high pressure, liquid doesn't go through our membrane. And uh, so if the liquid is contaminated, this would not go through as well. Um, so just imagine, uh, as I said, uh, uh, either liquid chemicals, but also liquid biological agents. And uh, this also facilitates effective liquid decontamination. So let's move to the, to the, um, uh, to the level of uh, thermoregulatory balance that is needed for an operator to deliver the mission in uh, an effective way. And uh, as most of you know, normally when, uh, when we operate, we do uh, some uh, activity uh, from low activity, physical activity to medium to high activity, we produce heat and, uh, and uh, on the other end, uh, we can lose it through different ways. Uh, our body can can lose heat, and uh, this also depending uh, from uh, from uh, where uh, we are doing the activity. Uh, how is the outside environment? But normally, what is important that the heat balance for our body is around 37 degrees Celsius. So the idea is always try to keep the body at uh, at the balance where uh, uh, we can operate physically and psychologically in the best way. And this is uh, something I definitely am not able to explain, but uh, some scientists did. And uh, so I have asked my, my scientists uh, in, in the company, okay, how can I explain this? So they simply said, okay, you can say this. And basically it's, uh, is the, the, the summary of all this is heat production minus heat loss is the heat storage. In the case of the body, uh, when we produce heat, uh, a lot of it, uh, we need to dissipate this heat. We need to lose this heat. What we don't lose, we store. And uh, this make uh, our uh, body temperature going up and up. So one of the most uh, known uh, way to, to dissipate uh, body heat is, uh, is with evaporation. It's very efficient. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, the body do this in a very efficient way. And as you see, when the temperature goes up, the skin release sweat to dissipate this heat. The sweat, when you, when you wear a protective clothing, goes through the clothing, protective clothing, and, and so you, you manage to dissipate. 
how the clotting uh, stops or slow down the dissipation of it is uh, a, 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 will uh, will make the difference on uh, on uh, our uh, uh, heat stress and our thermal burden. So normally this test, uh, the, there is an ISO test uh, that is uh, for sure in, in Europe mostly used, that is uh, the RAT, resistance to evaporation transmission. And uh, as you can see, uh, normally uh, the, the RAT of a gore Kempak selectively permeable membrane is around uh, eight, uh, between eight and nine, which is comparable to a traditional carbon technology. So normally a carbon technology offers air permeability, which improves uh, the, um, the, heat, the heat loss, uh, which doesn't, is not uh, offered by, by a, a membrane system. But uh, the, the resistance to evaporation transmission sometimes is either the same or uh, in some cases even better in, uh, in, uh, with the gore uh, selectively permeable membrane because uh, this is very thin uh, fabrics. So while sometimes the uh, carbon layer are thicker and, uh, and this will, will uh, increase the resistance to evaporation transmission. Oops, sorry. So we were talking a lot about effectiveness and um, Basically, effectiveness is, is uh, the degree to which something uh, is successful in producing a desired re result. So, yes, success. So, we need to think also what, what else matters and why does it matter. And uh, the ability to uh, manipulate and interact with, with our external environment, uh, the, the bulk of the ensemble that need to protect us and the weight, how much and where is the weight are absolutely very important for, uh, for, uh, for uh, the, the mission effectiveness. And the, in terms of, uh, of garments, uh, we, deli we, we delivered also in this area, the, the, um, the experience we, we grown uh, in producing Gore-Tex garments and we know that uh, uh, when you have a stiff jacket, there is economic discomfort. So when you move with a stiff jacket, uh, you make an extra effort. There is the restriction in, uh, in the movements. There is an higher force necessary to move, therefore a higher heat production. And uh, there is a higher pressure against the skin. And as well, this this in, uh, increase the effort. So normally, how how uh, is manufacturers of uh, personal protective equipment compensate? This is oversizing the jacket. So you you very often see in uh, personal protective equipment, and especially in uh, in uh, CBRN protective garments or uh, or ensembles. Uh, the, the, the garment is, is quite bigger than uh, the, the, the operator. So you, you immediately realize that uh, there is at least one oversize in, in the garment. So what Gore has done also in this area is uh, uh, try to find a solution. And uh, the solution in this case has been to use in some uh, in some uh, area of the garment, uh, stretch gore Kempak uh, selectively permeable uh, uh, fabrics. So the elasticity uh, reduce definitely the, the uh, uh, sorry, increase definitely the possibility and the freedom of movement. There is lower pressure against the skin and there is a lower force necessary to move. So as you can see, the concept is to use, uh, and you can see in, in the, on, on the right side of the picture, there are some areas of the garment uh, are, uh, are made with stretch fabrics and some others where a stretch is not needed are made with, uh, with a 
traditional long stretch uh, uh, fabrics. Of course, this, this uh, uh, help the mobility, the, the agility, and offer a better thermal burden because uh, there is a lef less effort in the movement, but also by using stretch material, you can uh, design a better fit, better design of the garment, which will, uh, will fit closer to the skin, will be tighter, so there will be less air layer between the garment and the body. And as you all know, air is uh, a very high, um, is, is, is probably the best uh, uh, insulation. And so when, uh, when uh, you produce heat, this, uh, the more air you have between uh, the garment and the body, the hotter will, will uh, become the, the micro uh, uh, environment that is uh, uh, between the body and the, and the garment. It's also possible to reduce the weight a lot and to reduce bulk and uh, easy, to, easy pack uh, of the garment. Of course, to do so, it's very important to have the best uh, sizing. And so it's important that uh, each wearer will use uh, the, the proper size of the garment for his body. So in, uh, in summary, uh, consideration must be given to both the physical barrier performance characteristics, as well as the thermal burden imposed by the chemical and biological protective personal uh, protective equipment. And uh, we in GORE believe that the selectively permeable materials present an option to balance physical protection and thermal burden. Again, this is uh, a, a system that has been developed with, uh, with uh, GORE CAMPAC uh, uh, material and uh, is called uh, um, uh, chemical and biological protective combat style uh, uniform, CPCSU. And uh, with the stretch material, we call it flex fit. This is actually in, uh, in, uh, in use uh, uh, in, uh, with different uh, uh, units uh, in, uh, in uh, different armed forces. But also we have developed a fully, uh, a full, fully stretch undergarment that can be worn underneath um, the, um, the duty uniform. And uh, this of course will, uh, will deliver uh, uh, some advantages because uh, it's, uh, it's very next to skin and uh, this helps to have the, the best uh, freedom of movement and uh, uh, wearability in the users. On the other end, for sure, of course, this is uh, a garment that needs to be prepositioned before the mission. But GORE also produced several type of garments and for several type of inducers. So mostly military armed forces, uh, uh, firefighters, uh, civil defense, um, uh, law enforcement and security. And uh, we have, uh, um, garments that uh, can offer a different level of protection according uh, to the uh, mission requirements. Uh, together with garments, uh, uh, we produce with our uh, fabrics also socks, uh, gloves, hoods that uh, can deliver the same level of protection and comfort. And this is a very important uh, gore camp material are the only ones that can offer um, uh, the only breathable products sorry the only breathable products that uh, uh, used in a garment uh, or in the accessories of the garment uh, can deliver uh, uh, can obtain a certification against the NFPA 1994 standards so that's it and uh, Thank you so much, uh, Giovanni, for the presentation. I can see that there are five to six questions from Dr. Peterfi of, of the OPCW. So my suggestion is that in the virtual reality, your avatar and the avatar of Dr. Peterfi can meet now. 
and you can have a private chat because basically all the questions are coming from him. Or if you will not be able to engage a discussion on the virtual reality, I will exchange your contact so you can be in uh, in touch. And uh, in that way, we can give the opportunity to the audience also to make a small break before the afternoon session. Absolutely. Giovanni, thank you so much and thank you to Gore for the continuous support since uh, 2008. You are an historical partner and we are we are very proud to cooperate with you guys. Thank you so much. I, I am as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Mike, the closing remarks are yours. Right. Well, thank you, um, Andrea. It's been um, a long morning, <laughs> but it has been wonderful to be here. And I, I thank you once again for actually inviting